What's up, nerds? I'm D Quigs, and today we're checking out the Krillity K1C 3D printer. Now, I chose the Krillity K1C because it was around my price point at the mid $500 range and had all the things I was looking for after being majorly disappointed with my piece of shit MP Mini Delta, which I got many years ago, was terrible in pretty much every way imaginable, and finally died a slow, painful death, thankfully. So, what are the things I was looking for in my new 3D printer? A, a large print volume, B, an enclosed print area, and C, a high temperature bed. Also to note, D, being able to print something basic without unscrewing a bunch of sensors and sending a ton of G commands to manually calibrate everything after spending several days not understanding why all my prints are shit and having to do a ton of research on Reddit would definitely be a plus. So, did the K1C meet all my expectations? Yeah, actually it did. Did it exceed my expectations? Surprisingly, yes. The K1C has a print volume of 220 by 220 by 250 millimeters, which is do the math yourself in freedom units. Generally, that's big enough for most 3D printing purposes, unless you're trying to print a life-size Betsy boat to float around in, link in the description. The enclosure is sleek and effective, and the printer isn't an eyesore while sitting on your shelf gaining dust after you're done printing cheap and useless objects to give to your friends and family because you're too cheap to buy Christmas presents. And the enclosure keeps the aforementioned dust out of the build area, which is nice. It also keeps the temperature uniform, which helps to prevent warping on ABS prints, which is a big part of why it was a requirement for me. The bed is great. It easily reaches and holds a temperature of 100 C, or 212 freedoms. You can thank me in the comments for doing that math for you. It has a magnetically held build plate, and after the aid of a little bit of stick glue, I can't complain about the adhesion. Auto calibration works great, but takes some time, about 10 minutes or so. The best part was I didn't have to print a bunch of failed prints over and over again and scrub through a million degenerate Reddit posts to find out I needed to perform manual G-code calibrations and loosen and move sensors blindly after nearly stripping a couple crucial screws out to get a decent print. Fuck you, MP Mini Delta. The only real issue I experienced was it not being compatible with Cura, which was annoying, but despite all the hate on the internet, I found the Creality print software to be intuitive and relatively powerful. Again, I'm not a 3D printing expert, but the software is easy to navigate and seems to have all the standard bells and whistles. Still can't figure out how to adjust the filament price, it just gives me an estimate, which is good enough I suppose. But for now the big part, it has a built-in camera. Not just any camera, an AI camera. Luckily, I didn't even notice this point when making my purchase decision, but we'll get more into that in a bit. But for now, let's get to unpacking this thing in our first print. First thing you notice is this thing is the size of a small child in a box. So you can save your box to mail your children or siblings to their grandparents for the holidays instead of listening to them argue about who's the better Fortnite player for 8 hours in the back of a cramped minivan. While I don't recommend this, mailing children via the postal service is generally frowned upon. I do believe it could be possible. Upon arrival, my box is beat up quite a bit, which worries me. But I suppose it's not the Amazon delivery guy's fault they don't speak French. Luckily, it didn't matter. This thing is packed tight and has plenty of styrofoam to choke on. It comes with all sorts of standard goodies and a few extras. Some assembly is required, but it's not too bad. If your attention span isn't fried after watching three hours of YouTube shorts while sitting on the toilet in your dilapidated bathroom, you can put it together in about 30 minutes. There's a few screws that need to be removed before use, but are clearly marked. If you can read, there's directions, and if not, there's pictures. The LCD cable plugs in clean, the screen snaps into place without issue, and the charcoal enhanced air filter goes into place easily. It has a removable top so you can keep the insides warm on a cool winter night when dealing with ABS prints and can be removed from PLA prints or if you're working in a Middle Eastern sweatshop printing useless crap to sell on Timu. The one snag I had was getting this handle screwed in. The supplied Allen keys kind of sucked, so I went and got my trusty electronic screwdriver kit thingy and much wow, it worked great. After all that, I got it set up and decided to test out a print using the filament supplied with the device. One thing I did notice is this power button just feels like shit. It's not a solid, satisfying click. It almost feels mushy, and I don't have much confidence it'll last the life of the printer. Anyway, feeding in the filament was easy going, and watching it extrude that drippy resin for the first time was oddly satisfying. 
Of course, it wanted to connect to the internet, update its firmware, and probably check into its global botnet command and control for use in DDoS attacks in the event geopolitical tensions rise to a boiling point. But I'm a simple consumer and don't really worry about that kind of stuff. After it upgrades its own firmware, when you finally break down and install the official Krillity print software, it specifically tells you not to update the firmware unless you're experiencing issues, which that's always a good sign. Carrying on, I decided my first print to be a 3D printing classic, a model that was already preloaded on the printer. A Benji. And... <laughs> Whoa, <laughs> this thing is aggressive. It prints fast at 600 millimeters a second, and while the table I set it on isn't perfectly stable, it's not wobbly either. This thing rocks and vibrates when it prints. I was worried that this would result in a terrible print, but I guess that AI camera did its thing and corrected for it. Disclaimer, I do not believe this camera is hooked to any kind of AI in any way, and I'm pretty confident that's just a marketing gimmick, but more on that later. When the print did finish, it finished successfully, and is beautiful. Great job, Krillity. On to the next one. This thing isn't compatible with Cura, so I downloaded the Krillity software. No big deal. It was easy to use and the interface looks nice. But now, time to print something truly useful. A dragon. I got some overhang warnings and against my better judgment enabled supports, which may or may not have been necessary, but I'm not a 3D printing expert. I just do what I'm told. The spool kept kinking up on me, and I'm not sure if it was me, the roller, or the spool, but I had to monitor this thing the whole way through. Either way, all said and done, I got my dragon, and it printed really nice. Great job, Krillity. All in all, compared to the literal chunk of garbage that was the MP Mini Delta, this thing is a major improvement. It was easy to set up, prints cool things nicely, has a good build area size, self-calibration is reliable, and its bed can actually get to the temperatures it advertises. Uh, at least 100C, which is all I'm worried about. The proprietary software was intuitive and easy to use, but I do recommend getting a filament dryer to go with it. It's about 60 bucks on Amazon, and the one I bought allows the spool to spin a lot more freely and seem to resolve my tangle issues. As for the camera, it's nice to have a camera to monitor your print. It's cool to see. But does this thing have any kind of AI or use the camera at all to adjust prints? I personally would say it doesn't. That's just my opinion. Didn't it test anything? Didn't it check any source code or anything? It just doesn't seem like it does. First off, I left the plastic protective cover on, which made the picture terrible, and it didn't seem to mind. Then I had a print fail while I was away due to the spool getting tangled up, and this thing didn't detect it, or pop up a warning, or try to stop the print in any way, shape, or form. It just kept going with the tangled spool, outputting zero filament, burning the filament that was inside it, and probably burn out the filament extruder motor quite a bit. Now, should I have left it going unattended? No. But I trusted my AI overlords to make my life better, and they failed me. All things considered, I give this thing a 9 out of 10. It did all the things I wanted it to do, but it might print a bit too fast for its own design. The nozzle moves so quickly at the top of the device, the entire thing wobbles and shakes, and honestly, that scares me. It hasn't caused any noticeable issues so far, but I imagine that wobble could affect build plate adhesion far along in a print and be a contributing factor to print failure. Now, as far as advertising that this thing has an AI camera that can always monitor whether there are foreign objects or malfunctions during the printing process, that seems to be an outright lie. A, my hand is a foreign object and I was able to put that in there. B, I would think the most basic malfunction to detect would be no filament coming out of the nozzle, but that would be me. But hey, maybe it takes multiple hours to recognize an issue, and by that time the print's done anyway. Either way, I didn't buy this device for the AI camera, and didn't even notice this detail in the listing when I made my initial purchase. The other reviews I watched before buying the K1C didn't seem to mention the AI part, just the fact that it has a camera, and the camera works fine. I just wish companies would quit trying to mention AI in everything, especially if it clearly doesn't work as intended or if it isn't there, period. That's it for this video. I hope you liked it. Click the like button even if you did it because I'm begging you and don't forget to subscribe. In my next video, I'm working on giving an RC car self-driving capabilities and it's actually coming along quite smoothly. Join my Discord to join in the development of that project or to discuss your own. Link in the description. I'm sure we'll get to put this 3D printer to better use for that project. Until then, I have been D Quiggs, later nerds.